so friends here now we'll see the types of signals so test signals mostly so these signals are mainly used for testing purpose because they are bounded one of the signals are bounded and others are unbounded different types of bounded signals okay so first thing is unit impulse signal it says unit impulse okay this unit impulse is only described or defined at that point only at one point okay so if i consider it anything in a signal i know it from from now i'll consider it two points two types one is the discrete time one is a continuous time okay so del of m del of m is zero for n not equal to zero and it is one for n equal to zero okay similarly del of t will be zero for t not equal to zero one for t equal to zero okay now if i draw the signal if i draw the signal It looks like this. Okay, it is one. It is one. Okay, and it is at zero. Okay, this is the del of n zero. It is one. So this one, which we, this is the mainly the people confuse here with this one. Okay. This one, which is there, it is called as the area. Okay, you are confused. This is not the amplitude of the impulse. Okay, may basically the amplitude of the impulse here we define this signal as infinity. Please, infinity. If you want to define it in the way of amplitudes, then you need to define it in this way. If you want to define it as per the area. Then we define like this. Okay, so this is the area given by the impulse. That is one. Okay, so this is called del of n. Similarly, the continuous time period, the same thing will be there. Okay, with the continuous axis. This is a discrete axis. That's it. Okay, so this is the unit impulse. Next, next is unit step. I did not say it's a step, but it's a unit step. Okay, so this unit step it has u of n has zero for n less than zero. Its value is one for n greater than equal to zero. Okay, so when I draw this. Okay, so this is the unit step signal. It is one for greater than or equal to zero, zero for all other values. Okay, so this unit step signal. This will be the u of t in continuous domain, and it is represented like this. It is a continuous domain. It is a discrete domain. Okay, its value is one. Okay, so it is u of t one for t greater than equal to zero, zero for t less than zero. Okay. Now using the shifting property. Using the shifting property, and also using the common particular factor, okay, I can get the impulse function 
impulse function from the unit step signal as del of n is u of n minus u of n minus 1. Okay, that means the shifting signal of the discrete signal and the u of n signal u of n both are subtracted. Okay, so if I, this is my unit signal. Okay, now here it starts with the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the u of n. Okay, similarly u of n minus 1. I already told you shifting, okay. So it is shifted by one time unit. That means it starts at 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay, up to so on. This is u of n, this is u of n minus 1. When I subtract both, what I get is unit impulse here, okay. Unit impulse of area 1. So that is what I depicted here, shown here. U of del of n equal u of n minus u of n minus 1. Okay, similarly now, if I do the same thing in continuous domain, okay, if I do the same thing in continuous domain, you will see a different structure for this u of t minus u of t minus 1, okay. This is my u of t, okay. So, 1, 0 to infinity here, okay. As it is a continuous domain. Similarly, my u of t it starts at 1, 1 to infinity, this is 0, this is u of t minus 1. When I subtract both, what I get is 0, 1, 1. Now you can see, this is u of t minus u of t minus 1, okay. This is not the impulse, this is the rectangular signal of time period 1, okay. Whereas in the distance, discrete, distance, discrete signal, I got a impulse, but here I am getting a window. I am getting a rectangular window here. Okay. So what do what will do is in order to make this as impulse, I will make suppose uh, this is not a, this is something a. Okay. U of t minus u of a. Then I u of t minus u of t minus a divided by a and limit a tends to infinity okay if i do this if i do this i mean sorry if limit a tends to zero limit a tending to zero okay then i'll get my impulse here okay that even that impulse is not the current impulse which you are getting there will be such that deviation but if you want to bring that to the nearest part then we'll use this method Okay, and moreover, this u of t is not continuous at t equal to zero. That is an important point. Here. Okay. Generally, we say this, we show this for a continuous signal u of t, but strictly speaking, this is the original u of t signal. Okay, it has discontinuity at t equal to 0 that is the important thing discontinuity at t equal to 0 because if you can see the u of t signal at t equal to 0 minus its value is 0 for t equal to 0 plus its value is 1 there will be a change of time in the change of time there is a change of amplitude from 0 to 1 0 to 1 there will, will not be a sharp transition from 0 to 1 right so it takes some time okay to change from 0 state to 1 state that is the reason why there will be some discontinuity at the 0 point okay this is about u of t and next comes the unit ram okay or ramp signal we can say it is generated by r of t it is given by t for t greater than or equal to 0 0 for t less than 0 so that's t for t greater than 0 equal to okay that means it can be shown as this 
ओके रैम सिग्नल आर ऑफ टी नाउ वी कैन आई थिंक वी कैन गेट द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन जी स्टेप एंड द रैम ओके सो आर ऑफ टी इज टी फॉर टी ग्रेटर देन जीरो दैट मींस इफ आई डिफरेंशिएट आर ऑफ टी व्हाट आई विल गेट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वन दिस इज फॉर टी ग्रेटर देन जीरो दैट मींस व्हाट इज दिस वन हियर फॉर टी ग्रेटर देन जीरो दैट इज u of t okay so that means my u of t is differentiation of ram signal okay now going for parabolic signal parabolic signal okay uh, the parabolic signal when it is dependent by u of t is given by t square by 2 okay uh, this can be any amplitude but t square is the major thing the constant can be anything okay t greater than 0 uh, okay now it looks like this parabolic signal Okay. Now here the relationship between the ramp and the t of t. Now we know that r of t is t. Now what I'll do is I integrate with respect to dt. Now what I get is t square by two. Okay, this t square by two is the parabolic signal. That means the relationship between this is integral of ramp gives me the parabolic signal once again i am saying this constant i took as 2 here that can be anything any constant okay now this is about the parabolic signal now we step into the important signal here because most of the signals they show those kind of responses here that is called exponential signals This is first. These are of two types. One are complex exponentials. One are linear exponentials. Okay, complex exponentials and linear exponentials. Complex exponential is denoted by. I'll give a name of e of t here. E power j omega t. Okay, the linear exponential I'll denote by small d of t. Is given as c into e power a t. Here we have j, that is complex term. Here we don't have the j. Now we'll see the graphs for this. First, suppose this. Now, whenever my a is less than zero, that means I'll take a equal to minus one. Then this this turns out to be e power minus t. Okay. Now I'll plot the graph here for e power. Minus. Now I'll take e t equal to zero. Then my e of t will be c constant. Whenever t is increasing, that means I'll take an infinity, like it is tending to infinity. Then it becomes c by e power infinity. Whenever e power infinity is in the denominator, it is high value, so it tends to zero. That means it is tending to zero. Whenever it is negative, it is increasing. This will be my e power t graph for a less than zero. Okay. Now similarly, when I draw it for a greater than zero, that means I will take a equal to one. When I take a equal to one, this will be e power t. Okay. Whenever t tends to minus infinity, this value becomes zero. Whereas whenever t is increasing, it increases. Okay, this is about linear complex exponential, linear exponential signal. Next is complex exponential signal. So these complex exponential signals are always one thing is they are all periodic. 
periodic signals okay and this can be exhibited as cos omega t plus j psi omega t okay so these are periodic signals and its waveforms look their waveform looks like this if there is any constant here, i mean multi amplitude here then amplitude will be there okay so this looks like this these are in the continuous domains okay and whereas when we go for discrete signal okay now in the discrete signal in the discrete signal the same e of n looks like a into alpha power n in the discrete so no need to show the graph same thing will be there for the increasing other it is a decreasing graph okay and similarly for this E of n is expressed as e power j omega naught n. E power j omega naught n. Okay. And even this is also periodic. Okay. Even this is also a periodic. But as it is a discrete complex exponential, it has it exhibits some property. It exhibits this property. Okay. E power j omega n plus n equal to e power. So from this thing, what we will do is we will calculate the fundamental time period of the discrete signal. Okay. So here, so to to for this to happen, what to happen is uh, e power j omega naught n into e power j omega n to be e power j omega naught n. So I split it this. I split this. I got this. So this term should be equal to z one. So I'll do d power j omega naught should be equal to one. When this term will be equal to one? Whenever my exponential is of the multiples of two pi, then only this term will be equal to one. Now what I'll do is I'll equate both the sides. Two pi by m. Okay. Now from this I'll get. n equal to 2 pi m by omega 2 pi m by omega okay now n is the fundamental time period here okay and it is necessary it is necessary for n to n, n to be a integer value Into a rational number, also rational integer. Then only we can define this time period. If not, it is an aperiodic signal. The signal, the time period has its rational rational time period. Then it is said to have a rational length. If not, it is an aperiodic signal. Okay. So these are the classifications or different types of the signals. Which exist or which we mainly use in the signal sum systems and its related concepts. Okay, so in the next video we'll deal with the systems and their properties. That's all for this video. Thank you.